convert your log footage into Rec 709 in DaVinci Resolve. First, I'm going to add a node after this first node, because usually when you're converting footage, you want the conversion to be at the end. The first way to convert your footage is with a LUT. Here, I will go down to my X-T3, that's the camera I'm using, and I will grab one of their LUTs. Now you can see, already it converted the footage to a nice Rec. 709 or Eternal Look. So this LUT right here converts it to 709. This is what our 709 node will look like. And if I wanted, I could actually instead convert it to the Eternal Look, which looks pretty good. For now, I'm just gonna do the Rec. 709 node. Okay, so we have our first way, and now the second way, I would do the Color Space Transform. Now I'll drag this and drop it on, and I'll name this 709. And once you have this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in your camera's color space and your camera's gamma. So since I shot on Fujifilm, my color space will be Rec. 2020, which converts the colors and for the input gamma, I am going to choose Fujifilm F-Log. Now you can see if I turn that on and off, it looks very similar, if not the same, as the LUT. For the output, I'll choose Rec. 709. For the output gamma, I'll choose Gamma 2.4. And this is an easy way to convert your footage to Rec. 709. So we have two ways, the LUT, the 709. So if your footage is already Rec. 709 or you converted it, you can move on to the next step to how to properly expose your footage in DaVinci Resolve. So the first step you're going to do is place a node in front of your LUT or your Rec. 709 conversion and name it Exposure. Now there's a few ways you can edit the exposure. Number one, you can go to this tab and you can go to the waveform and see where your exposure is sitting. So the first way is the color wheels. And what you can do is you can bring up or down the offset in the color wheels to adjust the exposure. Now that's the first way. Now some of the problems with this way is there might be some clipping if you bring it down and it might clip your footage. Now if you don't want that, there's another way on how to expose your footage and that's with the HDR high dynamic range. You're going to go to these three dots here you're going to go down, you're going to choose your camera's color space and your camera's log since it's before the conversion. So what that does is it brings your exposure to the camera's color space. So it's kind of editing it like how it would if you shot it. What you can do now is you can bring up or down the exposure and you can see on the waveform it doesn't crush those blacks. All it does is it kind of squishes them and rounds them, kind of like how your camera would. It's kind of editing it like a raw file and saving as much detail as possible. This is the prefer method that I like to use. So right now my exposure is looking pretty good. Another way you can edit your exposure is with the primaries. Now you can offset the gain, bring up the gamma, and you can bring more detail into your exposure. This is more contrast based. I will be showing you three ways to add contrast in DaVinci Resolve. So the first way you can add contrast to your footage is going to the primary color wheels and raising the contrast slider. Now this adds contrast pretty well. This could be a nice way if you just want to add a little bit more contrast without having to go into curves and other forms of contrast like that. Now. You also have this here, which is the pivot, which changes where the contrast is being affected. So I can put 1.5 and you can see when I change the contrast, it'll get lighter or darker. So this will be like about the middle of the image. This is where the contrast is even with one being the darkest and with zero being the highlights, the highest. So usually you want it in the middle somewhere, 0.432. It's pretty in the middle and then you'll only add a little bit maybe like 1.2 to create a nice contrast curve now that's the first way of doing it now the second way of doing it we can turn that off is with the curves you can grab the color picker press on one of the highlights and press on one of the shadows and you can drag down the shadows yourself and bring up the highlights now one reason you might want to do it this way is because maybe you want the shadows in a certain position, 
but you want the highlights to be brighter. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you want the shadows to be light and you want to decrease contrast like that. Or maybe you want to add a midpoint to bring it down or bring it up. And you can really fine tune your adjustments with the curves contrast. Another way you can add contrast with curves is you can go to editable splines and you can use these, tone it back a little bit until you like it. And this will give you a nice subtle curve. And this just gives you a smoother output. You can see here, it's kind of like a fade off and it gives you a more smooth output. So that is another way you can edit contrast. The last way you can edit contrast, this is a more unique way of adding contrast. It's less of contrast and more of an effect. So what you're gonna do is go to the effects, go to glow, you're gonna drag and drop the glow effect onto this node. Then you're gonna go down to soft light, bring the threshold down, bring the spread down, then put the gain at either 2.5 or 0.3. Somewhere in between there is usually the middle of the image. And then you can use this to blend the contrast. Now, one reason why you might wanna do it this way is you can make the blacks even more crunchy. The reason why this is special is you can add spread, which what this does is it kind of makes these highlights and these darks bleed into each other. So it's kind of creating a vignette, but it's like a contrast vignette. Now, if you just want contrast, you drag that all the way down, bam, you get contrast. But let's say you have point one, you can kind of see it creates this like fuzzy outline. The higher you go, the more it bleeds into the other image, creating contrast in a really unique way, which draws your eye in more. So that is the glow node. Now that you've learned how to add contrast to your footage, you should learn how to saturate your footage. Now, first off, I'm going to show you the most common way to saturate in DaVinci Resolve, and that is in the primaries color wheels tab. Here you go down to sat and you can up the saturation. Now my footage is already pretty saturated, so I don't need to go this far, but this is one way you can saturate. So maybe you don't want your saturation to clip over here. So a second thing you can do, this is another way to saturate your footage, but it's called the color boost. It's basically like vibrance if you've ever used Photoshop. And what it does, it takes the colors that are desaturated and makes them more saturated. You can see the more saturated colors stay the same, but the less saturated colors are made more vibrant. So that is the second way to saturate your footage. This next way I'm gonna show you how to saturate your footage, I made a video on already, but you can watch that after. Here I'm just gonna show you very quickly what it does. So you go to channels, you turn off channel one, you turn off channel three, you go to color space and you select HSV. Now, it doesn't look like it did anything, but if you go to the gain wheel and you bump it up a little bit, you start to see that it's saturating your footage, but it's doing it in a special way. You can see the more saturated colors get deeper and richer and more dark. And what this is called is subtractive color saturation. Basically what this does, it makes the more saturated colors more rich and it looks more natural. It's kind of how film saturates because when film is exposed, the color crystals open up, it makes it more dense and that denseness makes it darker. And this is the third way. And if you don't like how it's saturating the whole thing, you can go to the gamma and this kind of acts like the color boost where it boosts the colors that are less saturated while also keeping the colors that are already saturated at a more neutral level. And you can see the more saturated colors kind of stay the same while the colors that are less saturated get more saturated. But I forgot to add a node before this, which is the tint and temperature node. When you're balancing your footage, what you wanna do is usually do it after the exposure node. It helps to have your saturation in place so you can see the colors better of how you're gonna balance the footage. Now, I will name this BAL for balance, but there's a few ways you can balance your footage. The first way, is with this eyedropper tool in the primaries tab. So you can go to wherever it's white in the image, click on it, and it'll balance it for you. Now, th there's nothing really white in this image, so what you can do instead is you can adjust these to make it look more like how you want. For me, I like it a little more green, it looks a little more natural, a little more natri if I do it that way. That's the first way 
how to balance your footage is the temperature and tint sliders. The next way you can balance your footage is with the HDR tabs. First you want to put in your color space and gamma, which I already did for the exposure. So what I'm going to do is go back to the exposure tab and I'm going to edit my tint here and my temp. Now what this does is it kind of acts like how you would in your camera. It would be like Kelvin. So if you want to adjust the Kelvin, you would just go here, make it warmer, make it cooler, and you can basically make it however you want and it'll look more natural if you do it this way. The third way you can balance your footage, if you go back to the primaries, is with this offset. Now, what you can do here is let's say, look at my vector scope. It looks a little yellow. What I can do is add some blues to contrast that because the opposite of blue is yellow. Now let's say, ah, I don't like these reds. I wish this was more green. You can add more green to your footage. Now this is a really unique way of doing it because it kind of affects your shadows, highlights, and everything like that. So if you were thinking like, oh, my highlights look a little too green, you could come here, drag down the greens and the gains to make it a little more magenta. And if the shadows were looking a little too blue, you can drag this down and make it more yellow. And this is just one way of how to do it. You could also go here and use the offset this way. And the reason why this is different is because it's pretty much the same if you go up and down like this. But when you do that, it also affects the exposure. So what you can do instead is drag these and it'll keep the exposure the same while also offsetting how you want it. So now this is a little more magenta. Let's say, oh, it's too magenta in the highlights. Let's make that a little more green. Uh, it's too green in the shadows. Let's make that a little more magenta. Bam, and now you have this really unique look and it's more balanced, but you can also create looks this way. Now that you've balanced your footage, you can move on to the next step, which is your look. I'm going to teach you about the Curves tab in DaVinci Resolve and what makes it so powerful for colorists. Already, you know this curve tab, this is the contrast curve, but what we're gonna focus on today are the hue curves. So actually I'm going to name this hue. So this first one is the hue versus hue curve. Now what you can use this for, adjusting the colors and seeing which colors you want to make different. So let's say this right here looks too red for me. I can use the color picker to pick out that and adjust this to make it more yellow orange or even more pinkish red. Now right now, I think it looks fine, so I'm going to just adjust maybe the greens here. So that's basically the hue versus hue curve. Now we can move on to the hue versus saturation. Now this is a little more important because you can see here a lot of these oranges and reds, they're kind of more desaturated than the greens. The greens are the most desaturated. So we can go to these reds and we can bring them up as far as we want, we can bring up the yellows, and now we have more saturated oranges and yellows. And let's say maybe the greens look a little too saturated, we can bring those back down. And that's basically it for the hue versus saturation. The next tab we have hue versus luma. This is where each color can be adjusted and you can adjust each color's luminance. So let's say you want the greens to be brighter, you can make those brighter or you can make those darker. Same with the yellows. And here you can see down here, I've been using the reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas, or you can use the color picker to pick each individual color. But for now, we're gonna just leave all these. Now this next one is the Luma versus Sat curve. Now basically what this one does is you can add points onto the graph. You can desaturate the highlights, desaturate the blacks, or you can saturate the blacks and desaturate the highlights. And you can make your own curves with this. Like let's say there's something in the darks that you want to be more saturated, you can pick that and adjust the saturation and it only adjusts the saturation on that luminance level. So usually when I'm using this tab, I might go up 1.2 and I'll bring this down to like 0.6. And you can see these highlights get desaturated 
while the colors and the shadows are still saturated. Now the next one is sat versus sat. This is kind of like vibrance. So these are more of the saturated colors down here. So you can make the saturated colors more saturated or you can make the saturated colors less saturated. Same with these, the ones that are less saturated, more saturated or you can desaturate those ones further. And you can see you can make different types of looks with this where only the greens are saturated because those are the most saturated part of the image. And it looks pretty natural. Now I'll get rid of that and I'll move on to the sat versus loom. Now sat versus loom, I'm sure you can guess the more saturated something is, you can turn down the luminance or you can bring up the luminance to make those saturated things pop more. Same with the less saturated things, you can make the least saturated things darker, or you can make those things brighter. And you can even pick and drag up and down to create different looks. Now, so how can you use these to create a look? If you think these are like too bright back here and you wanna bring back some detail, you can actually lower these and it looks like it brings back some detail. And let's say the shadows here, you wanna grab some more detail in there, can bring that up because that's the most saturated part of the image. You can create a more dynamic image using these tabs. Now I'm gonna adjust it to how I like. I suggest you play around and do it the same. I'm gonna show you how to use the Windows tab in DaVinci Resolve. The Windows tab I don't use often and usually I only use it for like the basics like making a vignette, but it can be a very powerful tool to create your own look. First, you have one, the square, pretty easy easy, self-explanatory. Each side, you have a feathering option. And I'm just going to show you the basics first. So I'm actually gonna start with the circle. So I'm gonna show you how to make a vignette with this. Now, usually what I do, bump that up to 70, turn the softness to about seven, then you can go to here, bring down the curves. And what this does is it makes it darker in the mid-tones. Then you invert this, and bam, you already have a vignette. And let's say you think that this vignette is too harsh, you can bring it up, you can bring it down for even more vignette, you can bring it more towards the highs to get it a little darker, you can bring it more low, so it's kind of like more of a contrast curve. You can add more softness if you want, and you can make the size a little bit bigger. And there, we have a basic vignette. And another thing you can do is you can edit this vignette, make it different colors, but to make it stand out from the background more and highlight the subject, you can add a blur. It can create more visual interest towards the subject. So that's off and that's on. That's one thing you can do with the windows. A second thing you can do with the windows, I will turn that off. You have this pen and you wanna select the subject. Here I wanna select the tree. So you can add a point, add another point, drag it. You can click and drag to make it curve. Then you can add another point, click and drag, click on the other side, click and drag here. And it's just like Photoshop where you can select the subject. Now, right now, to this, you can even invert it and you can see here it's selecting the outside, but I want to select the inside. Let's say you want to turn up the exposure on the subject so it stands out. So I'll go ahead and do that. That brings it up a little bit. And let's say you want to make it stand out more. So we'll make it a little bit more warm, a little bit more yellow. And what we can do with this is add another node, connect this blue part of the node to the other blue part of the node. And what this does is it creates the same mask. And what we can do is invert it in the key input tab. And now we have selected our background and we can add contrast. So I can blur the background more if I wanted. I could darken the background and I could even make it a different color. So let's do that. And I can go back to the original tab right here and bring the softness a little bit up just to feather it a bit. There we go. We have selected a subject and it's now bringing it out more. It stands out a lot more. And this is really good for like YouTube and stuff like that. If you really wanna have your subject just stand out, but for filmmaking, you usually want to do this in camera. It looks less professional, but it's still manageable and it still helps a lot. So we have that and we can also turn on our vignette. To me though, this seems a little bit too much. So I'm going to turn these first two off. I will get rid of the blur and I'll just keep it like this. And the last window that I want to show you 
is the gradient tool. So the gradient tool, what you can do is hold shift H and you can see how much gradient you want. You can add more softness. I will add seven. I'll bring up the till 90 degrees. We can grab this, go over here. It's kind of like a gradient. You can have it from one side and I've done this in a few of my past short films. I try to keep it low though because it can sometimes look artificial and it really creates contrast between this side of the image and that side of the image. And what we can do is even change the color. And I did this in a lot of my short films. This looks a lot more natural than selecting your subject, but still, it still looks a little unnatural, but it's great to add more visual interest. I'm gonna show you how to use the qualifier or the color picker, what I call it. So what I'm going to do is grab this and I'm going to pick one of the colors that I want to use. Maybe it's this one. And there we go. That looks kind of bad, but I can choose the green color right here. I'll turn off the saturation, turn off the hue. Basically, that's how you use it. It's pretty self-explanatory. You have the filters, the pre-filters, blah, 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 blah. If you want an in-depth look at it, I use it in my orange and teal breakdown of the YouTube look. So I recommend going and watching that video because here this image doesn't work that well for it. So now I am just picking out this area of green. And what we can do is invert it. This is how you invert it. And now we have everything that is not green inverted. And the pre-filters, you can clean up the blacks. These are just to clean up the image because as you can see, it's very noisy, which is one of the reasons colorists don't use this. But for the most part, it's kind of the same as the windows. You're basically making a window with the color, the luminance, or the saturation. So I can up the gain like that if I wanted to. I can completely change the color if I wanted to. But if you want to learn a better way of doing this, I suggest watching my orange and teal look. I went back in and showed some examples of what the qualifier can do and how it can be used. And I kind of made the greens more green and it looks pretty good. I was kind of trying to rush through it before but this is how it should look so I hope you like this b-roll of that and after this step I would go and use the color warper I'm going to show you how to use the color warper and why it's so important for your color grade now here you can see this is kind of like the basic color warper you can pretty much do anything with this but if you get the qualifier grab something you can actually drag it within this and this is really good for creating different types of looks. Like I could create any kind of look with this and this is just the basic one. And I'll show you the more detailed one later, but let's say I want this like greenish one. I want these greens to be more desaturated, but then maybe I want this right here to be more saturated and maybe I want it to be more green or maybe I want these to be red or maybe I want it all the way on the other side of the spectrum. I want it like blue or something like that. Now my computer is super slow. That's why I need a new computer when I was doing this challenge. And if you wanna support that, please give it a like, subscribe to see the rest of this. Anyway, I'll reset that. But that's kind of like the extreme of what the color warper can do. I would rather go to like this one right here and you can't do this with 8-bit footage, but if your footage is like 10-bit and above and you're like working with raw files and like big files, you can use like this color picker and you can really hone in on what you want. So like, let's say I want that a little yellow and a little green, but I want this to be like way more green and you want to like just split these apart. It's really good at getting those little, little, little details. And you can create really cool looks like this tan with this like dark green. And then maybe I wanna put the luma down on the screen to make it even darker. And maybe I wanna desaturate it. And it's really good at making certain types of looks. And I could go into more detail with this, but this is kind of like a beginner guide. So I don't wanna overwhelm you too much, but there's like locks that you can put on. So let's say you like how this is right here and you don't want it to change, but you want to edit the more saturated ones to be green. So you can lock that in place and it won't move. Basically edit the same exact color, but at a different saturation to make it different. 
and make it better. And you can even desaturate it and make it blue. And you can really use this to mess up your footage like I am right now or you could do it really subtly. I have a video about Dune, how I recreated the Dune look, and I use this method specifically so that I could get that tan look because it's really hard to get those colors exactly perfect, and this tool helps with that. You can even use this to like tint the overall image, like that's more blue now. Now it's more green. I'll make a video about it, highlighting more features, but for now I'm just gonna stick to the basics. Another thing you can do with this is grab all of these, basically grab each color within its saturation. So this is all the same saturation, but you grabbed all the colors. You can bring that down and then you can do the exact same thing with something that's would be slightly more saturated and you can bring it up and it's kind of like the hue tabs but if the hue tabs were all in one place and you could do anything with them that's basically what this is you can make skin tones look perfect with this you can really make a look with this it is one of the best tools because even i'm a beginner with this because there's so much you can do you can go to this tab which i'm not even going to touch on because this this is crazy yeah no i i have to do like a more in-depth video for this because this is just a beginner guide this is just for like amateurs but i will do like a pro guide once i figure this whole out because this is kind of intense you can edit the hues you can edit the saturation like you can like skew all these colors to the right kind of like you're adjusting the overall hue of the image but you're doing it for a certain saturation how to sharpen your image within davinci resolve the right way first you're going to go to the blur and sharpen tab it should be here blur blur but then you go here to sharpen once you go there you can drag this down and you see it already sharpens your image and you might think oh wow that's great but instead of doing it that way what you want to do is you want to go down here to color space and change it to lab. What this does is it gets rid of the chroma artifacts that you might find on the normal color space. You can see there's a little bit of chroma artifacting. This image it's not as bad, but when you go to this color space, it cleans up that chroma. Once you do that, you can zoom out. Now we have a cleaner sharpness, but that's not the only thing. Bring up this level and what this does is it only affects the sharpest part of the image so that here the blurred background doesn't get sharpened and I'll put that at around 20 so it's only sharpening our subject right now and a little bit of the background after that we can soften the image so that we get more of the subject and it kind of bleeds into the background but still the most blurred out parts are still out of focus. Name that sharp. Now there's a few other things you can do. You can just leave it like this, bring it up to like 0.48, maybe 0.47. Here I'll bring it down to 0.5 so you can see it even more. Another thing you can do is adjust the scale and this kind of affects how close sharpness is because sharpness it usually highlights these areas and darkens these the darks to create contrast to make it look more sharp and here you can see as I raise this it kind of gets like bigger you can see more white there you can see dark there usually I just put it at the normal that works pretty good for me and then you can adjust the ratio too I don't really know what this does so if you know leave it in the comments below before I show you the second way I'd like to say that this is a series that I've been doing so if you're wondering what all these nodes are you can watch the other videos I'll have it show up here the second way this is a more stylized way to sharpen and it's not even really sharpness but it's called midtone detail what this does is the highlights, it either softens the highlights or it can make the highlights more sharp. It's kind of like the clarity tab in Photoshop. If I have it at zero, this is what it looks like, but I can do negative 70 and you can see it kind of blurs everything if we go negative, but if we go positive like 50, it creates this like sharp edgy kind of feel. It's really used in like photography to give it like that edgy moody look and this is another way you can sharpen your image in a more stylized way how to finalize your look using a one last corrector node what you're going to use with this node is to make any corrections that you want for your overall image this could be color corrections this could be contrast corrections and it really is up to you now for me 
usually what I do is I put this at zero and I try to bring the highlights as close to white as I can and the darks as close to black as I can. How I do this is I usually bring this up and bring this down. If it's already at the highest it can be and at the darkest it can be, you can instead go to your colors and see if they're in the right place. Now here you can see it's a little on the green side. Make it more magenta if I wanted. Bring down the reds a little more teal and feel a little more balanced instead of it being super green like that. But honestly, I love that green look, so I'm gonna keep it how it is. Anyway, that's how you make a corrector node. It's really up to you what you wanna do. So I think this is the final part of the series. So now go out and color grade. Just see what works for you and have fun.